Hello, everybody. Welcome along to the Blue Monday live stream Q and A, the lovely show where you set the agenda. So this will be the first of five thousand shout outs from me to say, get your questions, get your topics in right now. And frankly, I'm going to sound like a teacher now. The more topics you put in, the less I'll have to say it. So, yeah, pop your questions um, in there. Um, just a quick um admin issue i may appear pixelated but if you mention it in the chat your computer will explode that is right richard isn't it not that i'm sensitive about it richard woodward how are you sir i'm all right i'm, I'm surviving unlike members of our pod team who are who are desperately yeah, trying us, to evade the rona aren't they tell us tell us more um get your questions in guys get some get some questions you set the agenda um uh, hello let's say some hellos um uh, Charlie, James, Rob, um, M1. Questions, questions, questions. Um, we we can talk, but we'd love to answer your questions and your comments. Um, yeah, we've 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 got a possible um, Blue Monday uh, outbreak, haven't we, Richard? You weren't supposed to be here tonight, were you? No, I wasn't. Uh, I, I think I'm probably third choice, aren't I? And <laughs> somebody in the chat will say that I'm even lower than that normally as well. So we need to send you're, our best you're, wishes. You're Sean uh, Aluko, yes. <laughs> Exactly right. I, I can still do a job, and someone paid seven million quid for me at one point. So that's all I need to know. Um, yeah. So you, we need you to famously balanced out Mo Barrow. Remember him? Exactly. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Um, so yeah, we we need to send our best and bags of fruit and grapes and barocas to um to Dave and Joe. I think Dave's patient zero. We think Joe's uh, managed to evade it, but has got a nasty cold. So I'm um, I'm very happy to be here again, guys. And um, yeah. Uh, definitely keen to hear from people about last night and anything else there get well why, soon why am i uh, laughing mondo. at one of my friends having a horrible virus is is hashtag get well soon diamondo Di from um yeah. michael Pentis hey, Smith. Hey. i can see questions coming in again apologies if i look a little bit like a a minecraft character um get those questions um stocking up in the chat there and we'll start getting through um, obviously, the, most of the world's internet servers um, went into meltdown, didn't they, on um, on Monday. And this service we use, StreamYard, was badly affected and has been quite rubbish all week. But I do acknowledge it may be the technology um, my end. Were you broadcasting well. Monday? Um, all day. Yeah, all no day. Way, I'm, uh... screwed by it. And I had a roundtable at the end of the day. There we go. I'm sure Blimey. lots of people lost lots more money than me, Richard. So... I mustn't grumble. Evening to um, FPL Tractor, uh, Giovanni Bananas, bananas. Van, Van Bronckhorst, Dos Santos. Uh, Mark, how are you from Dublin? Uh, welcome in Dublin, Mark. Questions in. I can still only see two. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a, um, a kind of reset. Here is um, the lie of the land um, at the moment. We are down in 19th place. Um Horrible defeat at Accrington, which the boys covered on the pod on Sunday. However, it was seven points from three before then. And um, I'd be interested to know what you guys in the chat made of a sort of second string victory, but a victory nonetheless. And uh, with people like Connor Chaplin um, involved, um, a, a useful, I guess, victory at um, Gillingham in the pizza cup. Um, and if you want to comment on any future fixtures and make any projections for us to read out, uh, Shrewsbury at home, which Richard has told me is definitely going ahead. So if it doesn't, it's um, his fault. Uh, Cambridge away the following week. And then there's a couple of tricky ones. Pompey, it's a free game week on the Tuesday. Fleetwood, who score a lot, concede a lot, come from behind. Plymouth away, which is a bit of an ouch at the moment. Uh, Great. Keep those questions coming in, guys. And, um, yeah, Wickham, we know all about it's another um, three-game week, isn't it? No, we missed the, we missed the Saturday there. But um, a couple of tricky fixtures, especially trips to Pompey 
and Plymouth, although mm. knowing Ipswich Rich, they'll be the ones we get points from and not the others. Right. Here's a question for you, my friend. Why did Kenlock play? Is he back in the plan? A return for the um, erstwhile Miles Kenlock. Um, what's your take on that, Richard? It's a strange one, that, because, uh, I mean, he might be back in the fold. He's got a squad number now, I think, number 40. So dissect that number, if you will. But we can't play him in the league, can we? We can't register him now to play in the league because we need to set our squad, our 22, at the end of every window. So he's, he, he can only get in for the Cups. Um, just, I've, I mean, I don't think Kenlock ever let anyone down. He was never the perfect left-back. So I was a bit surprised that he's been frozen out for so long. It sounds like he's knuckled down, according to Cook, and done all the right things. But but last night hasn't really helped because it's not as if he can play on Saturday now. Um, he, he's he's an option for the, the for the cups. We've obviously got the first round, ugh, first round of the FA Cup. It's almost as galling as talking about playing in the Pizza <laughs> Cup, isn't it? The first round of the FA Cup. So he's only available this, for those. Is this some kind of asset protection? I'm trying to think of an. Maybe it is getting your lawnmower out in the in a winter, just give it a little yeah. run around, even though you can't cut the grass. Put it on the you front might. lawn and stick a little for sale sign on it. Yeah, maybe it's that. Yeah, you might you might need it, but yeah, um, I, I I suspect you're right, Richard. And it's um, look, um, I, I suspect if there's any sensible offer, um, out out he'll go and um, maybe like Josh Emmanuel, we'll see him starting in the Championship and League above. Um, <laughs> Where we are now, um, FPL Tractor, how relevant is a game between Ipswich's second 11 and Gillingham's 1.5 11 for picking a team on Saturday? I suppose, Rich, it's, it's as relevant as the fringe players choose to, choose to, but are able to make it with their performances, right? Yeah, I, I think if you're Edwards or Chaplin, last night is your addition for the vacant spot that Bursant Selina's international call-up gives you right. so pretty important isn't it, it uh, maybe even pig at norwood so i think in that respect i, I mean to fbl tractor's point and by the way thank you for the photo fbl tractor that we post on the insta instagram last night very arty like that Do you have to pay um, him for it uh i did no no definitely not <laughs> did, did, did no pay him <laughs> <laughs> did not buy you a beer next time i see the fbl tractor um i i, I think it like it was useful for momentum building, isn't it? And and getting trying to rinse the stench of defeat off us and starting to build that you know mem- that w- winning momentum as Chapman was talking about. It doesn't matter what the game as long as we you know if we're winning then that's that builds momentum and breeds confidence. But I think if you're Edwards, if you're Carl Edwards, if you're Connor Chaplin, I think you'll look at using last night as an audition. And both of them, I think, did enough to suggest they might get a start. Well, also, Rich, if I'm Joe Piggott and I score a goal in a game, maybe I get on 15 minutes earlier yeah. if we're yeah. possibly struggling the next game. If I'm El Mazzuni, uh Harper, we really expected to be a first team, or I think maybe he may have been one that was actually not pleased to see Sammy Morsi come uh, come in the door. But, hey, you can have as many good players. Um, and people like Vincent Young as well, who you think have yep. had a bit of a drop-off. Yeah, so, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, we, we, we can... I don't think it's going to drastically change the selections that Cookie will make on Saturday, but it increases the number of op- headaches that he's got. And as you say, Vincent Young, we're all hoping finds that form, and it sounded like last night he'd started to do that. Um, so I, I, th- I think it presents positive problems rather than negative problems, put it that way. Absolutely. He says pressing all the wrong buttons on the <laughs> mission control. I was worried to see my face so big now. I don't like it. <laughs> Sit back. Cool. Sit back. No, keep your questions coming in. Brilliant stuff, guys. Uh, M1, something I used to spend a hell of a lot of time on. Uh, three wins in five games. Are we all a bit happier now? Um, speaking personally, I am, but I do understand the the people who aren't. And I, I guess whilst we, Richard, are it, anywhere in the bottom half of League One, a defeat will be met by this is not good enough. Whereas if you're in the bottom half of League One and you win, it's like, okay, that's a three points in the right direction. I'm personally happier, but I do, except if anyone comments saying they're not, it's a perfectly reasonable position. What, what's your view, Rich? It is a difficult balance to strike. And, and we've really struggled to get, I think, find that balance on the podcast because you know we get a lot of 
criticism as well as praise on taking the positions we, that we do and we all have different views like all of you do as well and and to me i think these wins are about context the doncaster win in of itself didn't really tell us much because doncaster bang out of form really tri tricky trip to plymouth and then a trip to portman road that you know i guess we we built it up on the pod saying we need to win we did win um and that wasn't a surprise the the you know the scoreline was a positive certainly but it's only as good as the result that then follows and it was the defeat in the poor second half really that resets things but i do think we're it's a societal problem it's a social media problem we are so up and down aren't we and as you and i both say quite consistently ben the truth is usually somewhere in the middle the gray area is where the truth is and you know the, the brass facts are look at the league table it's not great but we knew that this team needed time to gel possibly more people some people have more patience than others so let's see how october pans out and, and if these wins continue if that kind of ratio that m1's mentioned there continues we win more than we Happy draw days. or lose yeah, yeah. then that trajectory is positive isn't it well not oh, only am i is. surprised that um I, I mean and i would say this to dave's face that he can log on to a stream and type a comment um but get well soon dave um is, are you symptomatic dave um poor poor fella um, hopefully um, he's lost his smell and he's lost his taste I think a bit of congestion he was telling me earlier he lost his taste years ago Richard. Eee. there we go I'm his mate I can say that you can say it <laughs> there you go uh, right what else have we got in here Rob uh, in Lambert's time I always felt we were a team of good players who added up to less than some of the parts I think that's pretty inarguable isn't it uh, rather than more than that still the case under Paul Kirk um well, at the moment, that's that's hard to argue against. Although I see a, a far greater ceiling. I, I believed in Lambert for as long as I possibly could. And then, um, what's the phrase? That, there wasn't really anything under the bonnet in the end, was there? But um, it's, it's hard to argue against at the moment. That that league table's an, an annoying uh, piece of evidence, isn't it? If you are trying to make a positive argument at the moment. Yeah, as was Atkinson, wasn't it? I, I, yeah, Rob's got a point there. But I, I, th I think I kind of agree with what you're alluding to, Ben, which is it feels like there is there is more in this team than there might have been in Lambert's team. And we're starting to see those partnerships, those those the understanding, particularly the, the better attacking players. I quite like Fraser dovetailing in with Macaulay Bond, dovetailing in with Bursan Salina and Morsi contributing to that as well. Those partnerships are getting there. They weren't going to be there day one. And we kind of knew that. And again, I know we were impatient to see that, but I do feel that's getting there. The trouble is it can't always be Doncaster at home. You know, you need to be able to do it at Accrington away. And that's when we get onto plan B's and, and also the, some of the parts sometimes needs to be a bit of a fight and collective will to, to muck in. And I'm not sure whether we've seen any evidence of that yet. Mm, Charlie, will Louis Barry oh. be heading back soon? I, I suspect he will, won't he? I feel really sorry for Louis Barry. I really do. And I and I really rate him. A lot of my work colleagues um are Villa fans. Um and they are all asking me how he's get how's he getting on. But all of them have said he's a bit lightweight and he needs to kind of get that understanding of being around the first team environment. And so I whilst I think he might end up going back in January because his first team opportunities are so limited, I do think Villa will see this as a useful experience because, you know it sends a message if you can't necessarily jump straight into the Ipswich team um then it means you need to work harder doesn't it nothing is given to anyone on a plate these days um but I just wish he'd get more of an opportunity I I, I might have started him last night I can see why Cook played the team that he did I just really feel there's an excellent player in there and I don't think we'll ever see it and similar to your kind of joking point about Kenlock I'm sure Louis Barry would end up at another league one team alone and probably do really well and it I would be just disappointing go, what it might have been. I thought he was going to go to the championship. And yeah. I mean, we always defer to Joe on these kind of young England players because he's very, very sort of knowledgeable. Rob says um, overhyped or underused. Definitely underused, um, yeah. I, would, I would suggest. I very much trust um, but, Joe's you know, views. And, and that Villa game, Rich, last year where, um, where Liverpool were off somewhere else and then all the kids ended up play and he looked yeah he looked fantastic and we saw the, the Harvey Elliott pitched in at the middle of the table 
um, Blackburn team is where I thought Louis Barry would end up. But then I also didn't think we'd sign 15 players who could play off the front in a 4 2 3 1. So um, I, I, I would defend Louis Barry against um, overhyped, I think, Rob. And if he is, that's probably. Our fault and Villa fans' fault, isn't it? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, find me, find me a, cl- a supporter of a team who's got young players coming through their academy that doesn't get excited about seeing them particularly scoring against Liverpool in the telly. Um, We've Alan, had it, haven't we? we? Check the Alan Lee um, interview about yeah. that. He's very sarcastic but very correct about um, young players and um, over hyping them. Uh, Michael Penty Smith, what a guy! Who's um, he? Although Danassian has perhaps given us better balance and improved defensive stability. Yeah, probably. Um, could you see a return for KVY if he can get back to somewhere near his best? I just get the feeling with Danassian now that um, just whatever the situation is, whatever the year is in the next 10 years, it, he'll be slipping in and playing right back. It's, just, it's like a cockroach, isn't he? Just going, going <laughs> nowhere. And that sounded really derogatory. A cockroach in the terms of we thought he's... He's gone so many times and he's always found his way back, hasn't he, Rich? Yeah, I I, I really like Danassian and I think Lambert had a real bee in his bonnet about him, which I thought was really unfair. And he could have he could have done a, a really good job for us. But I, I think the problem with Genoi Danassian is he's not Kane Vincent Young. And there'll always be the kind of shiny thing syndrome, which is all oh, Vincent Young's fit and he's played really well against Gilling and we should chuck him in there. I just think at this point we just need the the consistency of selection. And I don't think Danassian's let us down. I think it'd be really harsh. I do. But I, I also understand Mikey's point about, you know, if Vincent Young finds that form, then he is he is the kind of, you know, the X factor fallback in this division that it could be the difference between draws and defeats and wins and all that stuff. I always say this on the pod. He's gone from the star guy, pin your hopes on, build the team around to, you know, with all the recruitment, a, a bit lost in the shuffle, hasn't he? So, yeah, yeah it can't... That that's probably more in our heads than in reality, isn't it? Uh, Giovanni Bananas. I'm going to say it again. Um, <laughs> that's right, guys. If you write a ridiculous name, I'll read it out. But I will be wise to those ones that make me say something really rude when I when I read them. I'm always too late. I always there's, fall there, for it. Yeah, there's there's always. If you put it on the teleprompter, Richard will read it. You know, <laughs> Rob Burgundy. Yeah. There's there's a guy who uh, comes to comes to my championship channel, Mike. I'll leave a gap. Oxmall. And it, okay. It gets. <laughs> It's got because he puts sensible comments under his ridiculous name, but there we go. Uh, can Idris El Mazzuni be a decent stand in for the Sammy Morsi role of defensive midfield playmaker? Um, that's a tricky one because the, the nuance in that question shows how hard it would be this idea that you do actually get two possibly tricky roles that one player doesn't often do by themselves, as in circulate the ball nicely and be a bit of a outhouse there in midfield so I I would more prefer him doing one or other of those things but obviously Morsi's very capable of do, do, doing both what say you Richard? Yeah I I, I, I agree to an extent with uh, Giovanni Bananas's point as well um, I, I, I he had a really excellent um, appearance um, a couple of uh, that there you go thank you FBI tractor yeah a really good um, he really yeah um, and as you say it's not that he did both things well but it was it was Bannon he had in his back pocket basically which is no mean feat really and and what we, again we we like our academy players coming through and getting an opportunity and it, everyone was a little bit worried that he was the kind of forgotten man wasn't he so I, I definitely think because of the other type of midfielders that we've got as well that don't fit into that defensive combative you know more defensive minded um Number six, whatever you want to call it, number eight. I think he's got a he's got a real shot of making that position his own up to January, and then you kind of fear that January will be shopping again, maybe for someone who's more like Morsi. I I hope that's not the case, and I hope that Ilmazini's had a chance to to claim that that second kind of that backup spot. Graham sounds cross, Richard, but I'll read oh, it out. Graham, um, maximum fifteen points next five games. Capital, no excuses and play two up front don't start me on the two up front thing in theory four two three one you get three players in the penalty box rather than two but hey look this is this is a a long running um battle that i've had look i understand where graham's coming from i'm gonna push back a little bit if it's okay graham we said about those fixtures and yes 15 points from five games would be magnificent but remember we've done these calculations a billion times if you're anywhere near 
two points per game, which would be um, seven, no, 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 sorry, 10, um, you're doing absolutely fine, aren't you? Especially with trips to um, Pompey and uh, Plymouth coming up. So whilst I totally understand we we love a good quick run, I'd much rather see a viable 1.8 points over 10 games or something. So you know that that's going to keep um, keep cycling on. And um, yes, 4-2-3-1 in theory gets more men in the box. In theory, if it's done well, then uh, two up top. And let's play number 10 behind them and three at the back. None of those yeah. things will happen because we're going to play 4-2-3-1 every game. We are going to play 4-2-3-F in one, aren't we? And, <laughs> and, and I think I, I quite like, you know, Norwood came on at Accrington and I don't know whether that was a change of formation or he played in the number 10 position and was just nudged up a little bit. I did quite like that idea, actually. I don't, as I say, I agree with you that we're not in a change formation, but you can use different players in that number 10 role. And that has been the troublesome position, really. And in terms of the points tally, I mean, I would at least say let's temper our expectations somewhat, but let's, you know, Shrewsbury and Cambridge are games we are capable and should be winning, let's be honest. Let's start from there and then see where we get to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris, uh, surely Kenlock is just necessary cover where we've only got one fit left back. Otherwise, Penny would have to play the cup games. Um, yeah, I find that hard to disagree with, Richard. But then Bailey Clements, poor Bailey Clements. Yeah, you know, right. he was on the breach of getting into the squad during the summer and stuff like that and playing in friendlies. He's missed out. And I, I, I know that he's quite well liked by the academy staff, particularly Kieran Dyer. I just felt sorry for him last night that he didn't get a chance to left back. So. There are and other options, guy, but yeah. The legendary guy who designed our artwork with his lovely family oh, cheers, in the picture as well there. Um, if we fail to get promoted this season, would our first trip to the not-so-new Wembley in the Peach Trophy be enough to keep fans on side? And if so, what point will we start seeing the first choice 11 in the trophy? I'll do the first one. I think if it's a winning-ish season and we did go to Wembley and maybe did win the Peach Trophy and... God forbid more playoff defeats. There's there's not getting promoted and not getting promoted, isn't there, Rich? Yeah. And you know, there's finishing eleventh and being generally rubbish and terrible. And there's getting in the playoffs, coming up against a good side and um losing. Uh, but I don't know. Would I would I like to go to Wembley and lose in the in the playoff final? I think I'd rather lose in the semis, to be honest, rather than go go all the way there. In the nineties, we always knew if we got to Wembley, we would win. It was just getting through that away game and that two-legged semi-final, that ceiling, wasn't yeah. it? Every year I thought, if we get to the final, we'll win in a one-off game at Wembley, but just, yeah. Always had uh, the what toughest the, team. What was the second part there? Uh, what um, what point will we start seeing the first choice 11 in the trophy? Um, you would you would think um, the last three games, wouldn't you, the quarters? The, I don't even think in a, if we got to a quarter-final, it would be the first choice. Probably be the but, semi-final, wouldn't it? But look at the, I mean, look at the team that, played last night i mean who out of those apart from kenlock maybe and jackson are second choice or or, or reserves piggott's the starter no in theory chapman's a starter in theory edwards is a starter in theory harper is in was in started so is wolfman and ncr to start the first game of the season holy is you know i've got my, <laughs> I've you, had my you love holy don't you I love really? holy He's he's a when perfectly fine him. keeper. <laughs> so so that you what's wrong with playing that team all the way through? Do you know what I mean? Like, and you could afford I, to not. Richard, I hark back to last season, and if you said that was our first team, we'd have all been like, "Well, that's a big yeah, improvement on the, on the first team we were we were putting out." Yeah. Um, right, where are we going next? Uh, Ad 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 Rahak Ad Rak. Adrak? Is it something backwards? I don't know. Uh, Pompey have a long trip to Rotherham. Horrible. <laughs> Rotherham away in this division is nasty, isn't it? Because they're good, by the way. No offence to uh, there before we play them. If the result goes bad for them, uh, tough game. I think I said that, didn't I? Um, it might just help ITFC. What's for? I think it's the same as Sunderland. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. You don't want to go and get Paul warned and um, then have to, have to go and face um, Ipswich. But I know we'll get comments that say, it's the same for everyone, and you're always going to yeah. have to go and do Plymouth on a Tuesday and play someone um, on a Saturday. But yeah, fair, fair point. Um, Andrew, is it certain who our number one goalkeeper is now? Richard, I know you love to talk about the most misunderstood um, position on the pitch. Um, I don't. I'm not certain who our number one goalkeeper is. So I don't know what you were going to say. Go on. No, well, I thought it was um, Ladkey until until last week. Uh, 
I think the, the the trouble that I've got here, which creates the uncertainty that Andrew's talking about, is is Walton is Cook's guy, isn't it? He's Cook's number one guy, and mm. and 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 that is always again, it's kind of similar situ- situation to Dynastin. You always got your head up, you're always looking over your shoulder because you know that Cook's looking for an excuse to get his man in. Um, Haladki's our is our player. Walton might be, I guess, at some point, but I I just prefer players who are contracted to Ipswich to be first choice in the positions if at all possible so that's why I'd have it but the question's right I don't think we are certain um whilst he's not laid up and not playing goal <laughs> poor old David's getting a hard time tonight isn't he? um will DD finally update his Twitter bio does he still insist he's 50 he is 50 percent of 50, the and the, the rest words. of us are yeah, the he's the worst that have ever been said on the Blue Monday book. With the rest of us at eight percent or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right. I'll get well soon, David. Yeah, Sorry, we love a, Dave. This this is football banter. It's only because we love you so much that we can take the piss. It was just banter. Is it t- um RJM023? Is it time for Burns to revert to right back to accommodate Edwards Fraser? To be fair, if I was playing football manager, that's that's what I would do, and then I would probably lose a home game down the left hand side in in one of our games. Is that just, I know I, I'm probably been a bit of a hypocrite because I've suggested this a few times on the pod. Is that just too attacking then, Rich? Yeah, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul because Burns right, yeah. is just setting up Bond for a goal every week at the moment, isn't he as well? So you lose out on that. It just feels like chucking as many of the top rated players as, to use the football manager analogy. And I just think structurally, you know, we saw it at the start of the season. We just need a little bit more defensive minus in the fullback positions. Burns can do a job there, but I wouldn't have it as a first choice option. Uh, will we see two, mm. two up front anytime soon, or is Cook too reluctant to change formation? Um, I, I, I just I, I repeat my normal comments on this. With lots of people flooding midfields, the only way you'll see three up front is three at the back, and we keep three around central midfield there um i i hate to say it i just feel that it's it's it, it's a bit of a um i think it's a bit of a myth that um you're going to get more attacking output unless you do what mick did and it's two up front but you kind of sit in and you play sort of quite direct to them in which case you do have more presence up front because the ball goes to them earlier and you get people arriving on but um i fail to understand if it's in terms of attackingness how that's more attacking than a well polished which okay we haven't done yet four two four two three one but i think i've labored that point um i guess 10 years haven't i rich yeah i'd I'd ping a question back because i i I guess um what what problem are you trying to fix charlie by playing that two up front i mean i'd be interested to know that because if it's bonds too isolated for example I can understand that in away matches, but that doesn't seem to be a problem in home matches. So is there a different maybe strategy we need to do for those? Is it because the number 10 isn't working, um, but then we haven't played a, a forwards notion, a forward in the number 10 role? So I just, I'd just i be interested to understand that, Charlie, if you can give us a follow-up thought on that. Elucidate. Exactly right. It's a good word for a musician, isn't it? Um, thesaurus. <laughs> I've got it up on the other window. I just think it's happening well. Um, I play on Mazzuni and Morsi on Saturday, says um, yeah, interesting. Uh, FBL. Yeah. Uh, my worry is that plenty more teams will try and follow Accrington's physical style against us, and we had our best physical central midfield pair on the pitch there. How can we improve on Evans, Morsi physically? Well, in central midfield, we, we can't, but... Um, perhaps, and look, I, I, I don't want to sound an idiot because I've sat at Accrington and um, a lot of people got very um, triggered by Sammy Morsey's comments, but I totally got what he was saying. I I saw them in that FA Cup game, completely squeeze the pitch up, yep. drop the ball in the middle, win every second ball and, and beat us. And uh, I just don't get how that's an insult. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You play to your strengths and, and, and you win. But what I was going to say in defence of them, Rich, is for this team, this iteration of this team, yes, most of us fans have been to Accrington and and, and we know we know what's coming. Um, Drunk the Bovril, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Spilt the Bovril. Um that's the first um that's the first time they've got beat up in an in an away game. I suppose you yeah. could say the Cheltenham one, but this this team even feels different than the team that played against Cheltenham earlier in the season. Um yeah. 
Uh, there we go. Uh, right, let's try and rattle through. We've come up half an hour, but we'll, we'll do a few. Um, we'll do a few more. Um, quick. Uh, we're doing quite quickly there, and we we'll try and rattle through. Um, uh, Richard, you take this one. Uh, does Edwards now make it back in the starting eleven? Uh, really not sure anyone deserves to lose their place, but can he be left out? And I suppose this is with the caveat of um, Bersan Salina maybe not being around. Yeah, so Salina's not there, is he? So I think I do think Edwards will start, um, and I, and Fraser will be shoved into the number ten position. Um, so um, well, he with and again back to the points before about best eleven as as much. I think that involves Salina, a fit Salina oh. starts every week, doesn't he? So whether yeah, Edwards the, gets back into the team when Salina's returned, I don't know. The second tier lads, re, I retweeted it actually. The Salina goal for Swansea against us, and I was kind of like, if you told me in whatever when was that 20, 2018, that wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You told me in three years' time be playing in League One, I'd have been like. No. Um, no, so it's crazy, yeah, isn't it? I, I think you're right, and I'm sure you've all seen the clip of Sir Alex Ferguson, who's never wrong, apparently, telling that UFC fella you start your best players and then you, you kind of work back from there. And I think Selena is that. Uh, Sebastian Speak, anyone else disappointed the pre match sure. chiles aren't available? There? I think David Diamond, who's been <laughs> who's been discussed a lot, will be disappointed with that. Um, Steve, would you like to hear more from the owners who appear to have gone quiet? No, I'm 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 not too bothered. I think they did their um, initial charm offensive and um, you know I, I think you and I know Richard from certain discussions that there's a bit of a sense now of um, let, let's let keep keep quiet now and let Paul Cook let Paul Cook get on with I don't I don't need to be hearing from them anymore it's down to Paul Cook and the players now isn't it yeah I totally agree I totally agree I, if we're hearing from the owners constantly that's that's there's something not quite right with with that and and similarly Mark Ashton as well I think Mark Ashton said it gave a kind of a post mortem of the transfer window, didn't he? And kind of, and then said and begged for patience. What more can he now say apart from, I still think we need to be more patient, you know? And I, I assume he does program notes. He's in the fan zone as well. So I, I, I think probably you only hear from the owners now if there's something amazing happening or we need reassurance of some kind, but it's still, I still think more times needed. It's, it's such a fine balance, isn't it? Because the Accrington owner, Andy Holt, who's like on Twitter all the time, Dara McCantony on Twitter all the time. Sometimes I really enjoy hearing from them and I read Andy Holt's threads and I'm like, that's absolutely fascinating. And then literally the next day I'm like, it's too much. Just just, just, just a bit. Of, they yeah. can't. I always remember the QPR guy, Tony Fernandez. It was like, look, mate, calm down. Let Les Ferdinand do this stuff with manager or whatever. And yeah. Um, oh, there you go. Charlie has come back. Um, about having a flexibility. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a fair enough um, point, isn't it? With the the, the two up top, um, yeah. it is possible to be too reliant on one way. I agree, but it can also be a huge positive to be very good at one way if you're executing. And I do accept the argument that we're not executing. But the personnel, the, the, the personnel does give flexibility as well. Let's, let's not pretend that you couldn't push Selena right up alongside Bon if you wanted to or Chaplin even as well um, or Piggott but it'd still be the, a 4-2-3-1 if you get what I mean mm. HCH Tuesday was the first professional match I've been to well, well done for um, showing up actually on, on Tuesday well, yeah, yeah. there, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, where a programme wasn't produced has it ever happened to you guys I must admit HCH and um, I know people have different views on this I haven't bought programmes really since I always used to read the back and be constantly referencing it. And since I can get all the teams and stuff, I'm, when you're covering games as well, we tend to be very... You could go to a game with Harry from Bath, who's memorised the 11. He sits there at 2.30 or 2 o'clock memorising the 11 and can recite it to you by 2.02. So I'm not I'm not too too fussed about it, but I know a lot of people are rich, aren't they? Yeah, I, I'm not aware of a game where I've been to where it wasn't available, but as you say, I don't... I don't seek them out as much anymore i've I've been to one where the club has done two fixtures with one program which is a bit of a cheat if you ask me um, <laughs> but i've not i think didn't one team in the pyramid stop doing programs and they got a big old backlash or something but no i've not encountered that before yeah i think i i think i recall the but problem it is there's people me, that collect them that have got hundreds of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them and uh but hey if they stop doing them their collection will go up in value massively anyway on it so um, there you go. Um, Jane, is that Mrs. Nuts? It is, isn't it? I've seen the picture. It is. Um, is, is Louis Barry the new Luke Matheson? I, I think that's a very apt description, isn't it? Um, I would 
I would agree wholeheartedly um, in, in respect yeah. of um, one wonder kid. Um, we're not we're not going to see on the pitch at all. Yeah. And and, and from the Midlands as well. Um, and I also quite like the, you know, the idea here that it uh, dare I say it was a signing and I've tweeted this and got a load of abuse for it because people misinterpreted it. A signing that we <laughs> that we could it's make. Their fault. It's it's their fault, not mine. It's a signing <laughs> that we could make rather than a signing that we should make. We hadn't really got a strategy for it, and it was more we can get him. We can beat Sunderland to get Louis Barry. We should do that, and rather than we can, we have a position for him in the squad. And I think Matheson was a little bit inexperienced. Certainly, Barry was, and a difficult situation as well for both of them. It's slightly different, but yeah, I like that comparison. Right, watch me become the most hated man on the um on the show in the Ipswich space now. Are we massive? I was working, but I went to Old Trafford on Saturday, and I can report we are not massive. And I'll... <laughs> what made I'll... you say that in the seventy-five thousand capacity <laughs> stadium, Ben? Yeah, we've literally With Ronaldo money, money dripping out of every Cavani. Floor, but... Ronaldo. Uh, apparently, Isn't only it? only jungle oh. is massive. Um, which apparently originated in Ipswich, or is that an old wives' tale? But there you go, incredible. There's a great clip of um, who sings that. I can't remember. Um, th- there's Dizzy General Rascal, Levy? General Levy. That's it. Yeah, um, Dizzy Rascals um, in like a Radio One booth, and he starts doing it. And obviously, Dizzy Rascals a big star, but just completely turns into a fanboy. Seeing you know, presumably this hero doing uh, the ooh, 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 jungle is massive. <laughs> Please oh, yeah. no one clip oh, yeah. that bit. <laughs> what a song. Uh, what did you think of Chaplin yesterday? Look, I'm not the guy to ask because I'm completely biased in favour that I think Chaplin should start every second of every game and I think he could potentially be one of the best players in the league. So um, you answer that one, Richard. I think um, if you assume that it's the left-wing position that's vacant, I, I think Fraser starts, by the way. I I, I like Fraser. That's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I think me and, Di- yeah, me and Dave... Score says- he played ten. Um, yeah, so I, which is a position I, we still haven't solved yet, Richard. I think Fraser plays ten and Edwards plays left wing on Saturday. That's that would yeah. be my punt. But Chaplin is a player that has clearly got ability. Really nice, nice nicely taken goal last night. Quick, but I, I just think if you play him left wing and he came on for Burns at Sheffield Wednesday and had the kind of judges about him in respect of <laughs> brought on to play wide and started to drift inside and kind of played where he wanted to. And I just like Edwards is the orthodox left winger. He's going to stay there. And but maybe get maybe he drops Fraser, but I think that'd be a bit harsh. Sensational. Um, here in France, I'm a season to go. Red, Red Star FC, Neil. There is no such thing as a program, nor a go. PSG. They're too busy selling message sets. So I wanted to read this one out from um, Bob the Nod. Um, wider picture, I'm optimistic with the new regime. Be nice to have a few more points on the board. But three weeks back, we hadn't won a game. Um, I see progress. Yeah, um, I think it's quite a low bar, though, isn't it? I know, and I think Bob but the Nod is in I know the where um, from. in the calm um, yeah. sort of minority. But that is not me um, being um, kind of poking the people who are not happy because they do have a right not to be happy and hopefully they will be happy um yes certainly if we get that who was it graham and his 15 points 15 points 10 up front 15 points in the next five games right (laughs) thank you everybody for watching if you would like a shout out um stick it in there and rich is going to do some plugs i think and um and we'll give you a shout out before we go um Richard, what is coming up? Um, I've got an excuse. I've been vomited on and um, changed 5,000 nappies today. So I don't know my ass from my elbow at the moment. What's going on uh, later this week on the show? So in in chronological order, Friday a.m., Mikey and I will be doing the Shrewsbury pre-match show. We uh, No live show this time around, um, but we will do a pre-record. We'll put out as soon as we can, give you all the insights into Shrewsbury, and continue my long list of naming the player who's going to score or assist against <laughs> us for the opposition, uh, along with uh, Football Room 101 and um, all other kinds of fun and games there Can with I Mikey. Can I put David Diamond into Football Room 101? So I've been so horrible. To wow. <laughs> Who are we going to? Well, we need I to don't even to have vote. a reason why I'm going to do no. that. I just, I just want him to hear that and, and, and be annoyed evening, at me. Sorry, evening, go Dave. I, I, I've got a good bedside <laughs> manner for you, Dave. I, I love you. Come on. Let's have a virtual <laughs> hug. Um, and then um, 
probably we haven't figured this out yet but it will at least be monday morning maybe sunday night for the flagship show yeah um, i'm hosting aren't I? you so, and i are back i think and yeah if there's yeah. availability amongst the team then we might be joined yeah, by a third person but it crossed. might just be the the two vips back again you know the what the, <laughs> the two keep people keeping the lights on have you watched Bloom squid game house. No, yeah, it's on my yeah, list. VIP is a bit of a dirty word at the moment. Oh, okay. Wanna, no spoilers, but you don't want to what you don't want to be a you don't want to okay. be a, a, a VIP. But um, there you go. Okay. What was there was a um, charity was it thing you had to? Talk yeah, about not quite. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, Aaron from um, Leisure Leagues got in touch. Um, they have got a Sunday evening uh, six aside, which would be great if we weren't recording the pods. Um, for <laughs> all all abilities, it's Ipswich based. Free entry. For a limited time, there's a website as well, which is leisureleagues.net slash league slash Copleston hyphen center forward slash Ipswich Sunday. We will um we will put that, we'll tweet that out. Great um, Mac you... on the radio does that when he says slash <laughs> is so partridge, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, slash colon. every time. Yeah. Um, yeah. HTTPS colon. <laughs> um so yeah, and it's open to all and as I said, any abilities join in. Um I think they've they kind of got a subs thing. They're a not for profit organization. Any profits go to charity and um, the dogs trust or cancer research. So um, they're very keen for people to join their Ipswich six aside league on Sunday evening. So we'll tweet out the details there, but if you're, if you're interested, uh, the guy called Aaron Cooper, um, but we'll tweet the link and, or you can give him a, a phone call. Lovely stuff. We'll tweet it from our account at blue Monday, ITFC, which you can follow. You can follow rich at Ips rich, where you also get, Blue Monday stuff, but you get the gold machine and you get the Friday um, football shirts as well. So Rich is a good follow. You can follow me as well, but I suspect you'll probably block me. It's all um, Man United but... stuff these days. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the old Premier League gravy train. I am massive. Shocking. Unbelievable. <laughs> Let's do some shout outs on that note, Rich. You know, you buried me. I'm sorry. Well the championship but... stuff is excellent, by the way. The championship stuff is not brilliant. Yeah, there you go. Go for um, the Man United Steve, stuff. Stay 154, the you're welcome. Thank you. Giovanni Bananas. So, uh, yeah, get well soon, DD. Um, HCH, uh, 3 1 town. Yes, please. Um, look, any win by any amount of goals will do me at the moment. FBL Trade, a great show. Thank you, sir. Uh, Charlie, legend. And um, Charlie, a prime example, which we don't see very much on the internet, puts a question up. I disagree. And then he gives a different opinion. And nobody yells at each other. So um, well done, Charlie, for being a, a grown adult who's able to use the internet like most people um, struggle with. Um, got him ranting tonight. And I bought the nod. 4-0, uh, Bon Patrick. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised if um, Bon. Trey Bon. Um, oh, Robert. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll put that one up on the screen. Go and check that one out on YouTube. But yeah, Robert was super match. optimistic on the pre-match show last week, Robert. Oh, I, hope, I hope you're having a good week. Don't worry. It'll turn around. We'll sort it out. Um, and Chris legend thank you um sir uh right thank you everybody for watching before you go please hit like on the stream it'll take you one second uh, whether you're watching on facebook youtube or twitter and it will then help us climb their silly whatevers and more people will see the show if you haven't already please hit subscribe on um youtube that really helps us out in that space and if you're feeling very very lovely there is no obligation to these shows will always be free but you can support financially via the ACAST uh, supporter facility. And we've got a little PayPal thing. You can find it all on Twitter, but um, just helps us with the running costs with all of this um, live capacity. There you go, Charlie. You're legend. Right. Thank you, everybody watching. Um, say goodbye, Richard. Bye, everyone. And uh, we will see you on Friday and then Sunday and then Wednesday and then Friday. And then Friday, it's yeah. like a Mick McCarthy nightmare, isn't it? There we go. Right. See you later, everyone.